hi welcome to my channel today i have a special vlog for you today i am going to a press event for the life of pi at the lowry if you didn't know life of pi is going to be showing at the lowry over the christmas season so they're having a press event today um, i think it's going to be talks with um i think it's the director and i think they said there's going to be a special guest by one of the cast members and I'm hoping it might be the tiger puppet so it should be a really interesting day I think they says it's going to be a light lunch served and it should be really really good so I'm really excited to take you along with me and see what's going to be happening so yeah I hope you enjoy this little vlog you have the time of your life every single night the confetti's raining down you put your hands to the sky, center of the crowd, you're the talk of the town. And I tell myself I don't want that, what glitters sink gold. I tell myself I don't need it, cause I'm fine on my own. But I hate being on the outside, looking through a window. I say I don't want it, but I'm so full of it. I wanna be the life of the party I wanna dance with somebody Be ooh, 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 ooh. I wanna be the life of the party I wanna hold on to somebody Be ooh, 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 ooh. Living your life through a lens Perfect pretending You think no one can tell So we've just arrived at the Lowry. We're a bit early, it starts at half 11, it's just 11 now. Um, we've just got off the tram here at Media City. We're just gonna walk across to the Lowry, probably go in, have a little sit down, maybe find a good seat, and I'll get back to you once we're in there. I say I don't want it, but I'm so full of it. So we've just arrived at the Lowry now for the press event. I think it's in the Pier 8 um, restaurant. So I'm just gonna head there and then I'll show you what's going on. the press event now just sat at a table so we've got little Can just tell me about the show there's a little tub of biscuits there as well and then we also all got like a nice tote bag on our chairs as well and really excited for it to start now find out some more about the show <laughs>
get us started, I'm going to say some lovely words about the Lee Tan Fin. I'm going to sit here and wear it very well and shine and look at the least bit embarrassed. Uh, Lolita Chakrabarty, over the years, an actress and award winning playwright, is working in perform across the world. Her adaptation of the Booker Prize winning novel, <coughs> Life of Pi, um, won the prestigious video of the best play, and after running for a, well over a year in West End, opened on Broadway in March 23. Weeks after that, Hamlet, adapted by Lolita from the best selling novel by Mago Farrell, opened for a sold out run at the RSC. Transfer to the West End in later this year, September 23. Uh, the debut play Red Velvet is now in bronze for the A level, is still at universities in the UK and the US, and there have been over 20 professional productions in the USA and beyond. Now, all of that, I think this is your first visit to the Larry. It is. Uh, yeah. And uh, the first time we, we will see, well, actually, it won't be the first time. Cyclosis, isn't it? Even on those yeah, and if he could nail Hamlet and get that clear, put a word in, we'd we very much appreciate that. Um, Finn, in Caldwell, is Life of Pi's puppet and movement director, is a, a director, designer, and performer. He's also co artistic director of Guy and Gimbal of Theatre Company, specialising in puppetry. He was nominated for two Olivia Awards for his work on Life of Pi, and, and as we put it with Tony, uh, and won the Olivier for Best Design. We've been fortunate enough to see lots of things work. You have been married for you, so the meeting just started with you, that's okay. Um, Life by Jan Martel, a well known award. What was your relationship with the book um, before you started working on it? Uh, so I read it when it first came out in 2001 or 2, um, just as a punter, and I absolutely loved it. And I, I still can't really explain why. Uh, it's a modern classic, right? And it's it's such a fantastic story, um, but really unusually told. And when I reread it recently, obviously I read it a few times to do the adaptation because you wish you I reread it recently just to see because I forget what is Jan and what is me. Um, and I reread it recently. And it's such a it's such an unusual storytelling. The first hundred pages is the pie page thirty five reflecting on religion. The second bit is this bit of scene where he's, he's shipwrecked. And the last bit is these Japanese shipping officials questioning what happened when he was at sea. It's just such an extraordinary way to tell a story. And there's a mystery and a, and a delight because it leaves the reader to, to sort of answer the questions. And I think then and now I still can't answer the questions. And I think that's what makes it a uh, Okay, and so how do you. Um, how, how did it happen then? How were you introduced to this project? What have you adapted work before? How were you brought on? Um, so, uh, as you said, I'm an actor by trade, and I've been writing underneath my acting quite a few years. Um, and then I only really came out as a writer about 10, 12 years ago with Red Velvet, the play you mentioned. Um, I have adapted, uh, I adapted this other book that's crazy, Italo Calvino's The Music of the Cities. I don't know if anyone knows it. It's an impossible book, but I adapted it. Just in the city, wasn't it? It was, it was a Manchester yeah. Festival, of course yeah. it was, yeah. Um, uh, so I've, I've done a couple of adaptations before. Um, this, I'm a can do person, so I've no idea if I can do it, I go yes. Uh, and so I, Simon, Simon Friend, who, um, who had the rights to the book, asked if I would do it, and I loved the book. And actually, for me, I work very much as an actor when I write, so I, I, I go through, um, I write feelingly, I suppose. So, because I loved the book, I, I thought I could do it. And it wasn't until the first preview in Sheffield, when we were about to show it to an audience, I thought, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> That's when I thought, oh my god, have I done it? Have I done a good job? Um, but yes, that, that's how it came. So, so what's the process of that then? So taking uh, this book, it's not a straightforward no. adaptation, as you mentioned. So, so how, do you, how did you approach it? So I've done a few adaptations now, and it's very different, but similar with each. With this one particularly, I, um, I broke it down. So I got a PDF. This is a practical, pragmatic thing. I got a PDF of the book online, uh, and then I cut and pasted all the different sections into headings. The whole book. So there were headings about God, family, immigration, animals, faith, survival, doubt, uh, philosophy, and I put it in all these different headings. And then the basic story is this young boy, his family emigrates to uh, Canada, tried to, ship sinks, family dies, 
he is shipwrecked, he survives. So within that basic arc, I put all these different elements of family obviously has to be there at the beginning. So we have to understand that he's lost them, what he's lost. Um, and so it kind of naturally starts to tell itself, and you, you, yeah, it's like a patchwork jigsaw. So I was very keen that the family were very present, and very keen that my feeling is, well, I think it's just true, is that when you're in a moment of crisis, you use everything, don't you? Everything, every voice, every experience you've ever had comes to help you. And family is very appealing in that. Uh, and by family, I mean wider family, uncles, aunts, friends, all of them. So the people who have died in the first, uh, People we meet at the beginning of the play who die soon after and revisit in order to help high survive this journey. I see. So it's a very, yeah, almost like a for you a linear process. <coughs> sort of, but only because I can describe it now. At the time, <laughs> I just broke it down and thought, right now what? You have to be a frame system for the deal because the technique in the hospital room which allows that yes. continuity of keeping them back to that place, which is structurally appropriate. Yes, well, the Japanese shipping officials fascinated me. Yeah. I, I used to be at Tim Tim that has the Thompson yeah. twins, so the bowler hatted men. And I, they reminded me in the book a bit of the Thompson twins, but they both the Japanese shipping officials fall for the same um, remit. So, and I'm obviously, because of what I am, I, like, I want to be more women in the stories. And so I changed one of the shipping officials to a female Canadian diplomat who then come, who is, because Kai is shipwrecked in the um, Mexico, uh, but is on his way to Canada, it's quite complicated. Um, but this Canadian diplomat comes to find out who is this boy, is he legitimate, is he real? Um, and so she is there with this Japanese shipping official, which gives it a really nice uh, interrogation that goes through the play so that we can follow who is he, why is he here, what happened? And both of them have different reasons for being there. So Lulu Chen is a more sympathetic, empathetic um, office person. And Okamoto is a corporate business uh, older man who is um, there to do a job that is very changed by his man. Okay, so, um, because it does, it's also difficult. And I think no matter what age you are, two to 102, uh, we know difficult and struggle and survival. But I'm a great believer in hope. So no matter how, how far you fall, I think the thing that keeps you going is hope. And Pi's extraordinary. There's this young boy who, my gosh, he loses absolutely everything. Struggles, suffers, questions life, question, interrogates the deaths and loss and faith and environment and philosophy and everything, but always hopes. And at the end, he's, I, it, it, it sounds like a bit of a big word, but he's enlightened. Yeah. So he's not, a, he's not a religious figure at all, but struggle creates change, which can be glorious. That's a bit of a complicated <laughs> answer, but... No, no, no. And is it that, for you, is it, you know, on a personal basis, what is it that you, what brings you back to this, you know, you're here now, still talking about it yeah. years on, so is that, is it that hope, or is it something else as well that, that brings you to this story or makes you appreciate this story? I think it encompasses a lot of things that I believe are interesting in life anyway. So my parents are, uh, my mum's passed over, but are immigrants, you know. Um, and that immigration story is really fundamental to who I is. Going from India to Canada, ending up in Mexico through the Pacific Ocean. And then these animals are immigrants, really, from wherever they're from. And they're at sea. You know, it's, it's, it's got this journey and travel, and it's got this international nature, which I find wonderful. So there are characters from all over the world, but they make sense in the story. And then Myanmar town. There are little nuggets of gorgeous philosophy that I have completely nicked and uh, made it look effortlessly mine. Um, but, but just things that make you think. I mean, that's what real sim simple truths of life that make you think. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. And there are, as we've heard in, in the introduction, uh, a lot of um, fantastic work that we've seen here in this building. Um, what what is what is it about this show? What's the puppetry element of this show? What does it bring? Why is it so important? Why is it so special? Now, yeah, I guess you know someone would say, well, it's it solves something, but I, I'm guessing that there's more to it from your point of view. It's I mean yeah, it, it you know in these shows, puppetry solves a kind of a, a, a need that is very difficult to 
the real answer is very concrete, then you're still possible. <laughs> um, but I think it also speaks to something else. It's a uh, doctrine this show, as our uh, director Max will talk about, it's a fantastic metaphor for uh, the stories that we all tell ourselves that make our lives what they are. You know, we all live in these interior worlds, and the stories of your life are very different to the story of the lethal and the final, and I think this, the way the culture presents how people see the world or see reality works really well in the show. I think for this show, particularly, that's how the poetry works, but also poetry on its own journey. I think it's doing something extraordinary at the moment, which is just really exciting for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I, one of my first big shows was working in war, but I think we've come so much further with this show, and it's extraordinary to be um, nominated and get the Olivier for the six performers that perform the show, where they were awarded the um, best supporting actor. And again, that is incredible. The poverty is to be getting that. And poetry, but being the kind of you know, ancient art form that it is, but experiencing this kind of uh, ability to go into mainstream work and is still operating at an extremely high level, it's really difficult, it's really uh, specific and extraordinary, but it's also just accessible to people. People love it all ages. And I think that's what I'm really, uh, that's the thing that's really exciting is that the sort of life you can into is so many layers. The video is amazing, the set is amazing, the movement is amazing, the poetry is amazing, the story is amazing. With all these things operating at the same time, that's incredible. And for me personally, the fact that the poetry is really communicating the interior story of the time. So hopefully you, watching, get to know and feel what the time is thinking of doing in a way that nobody else on the stage felt that much. Cool. You mentioned Max, the director, yeah. and you're the director too, of course, the director writes. Um, do you think it's, do you think directors are, are, are more broadly open to working with poetry or actively seeking it? As you describe how the poetry going to at this point. I think I think people are wanting to use more and more poetry, and that's really really exciting. I think what's the bit that's really um, fun for me is people are really trying to understand what it's capable of. There was a bunch of years after the wars where every director I spoke to was like, "Yeah, we want to do this with poetry," and I'd be like, "Yeah, great, why?" And <laughs> they wouldn't really know. But now they're starting to know what poetry is really good at, and the general public and the audiences are starting to appreciate what poetry can achieve. Even with the success of the show in America, it's really interesting speaking to the American producers and their audiences because they've had like wars like now, 15 years later. This. And so the audiences aren't actually ready for it. They're kind of like, oh, that's amazing, it's amazing, but they're actually in this country because the audience has been on a progression, the puppeteers have been on a progression, us have been the design work has been on a progression. So and I think you need all three of those things to keep moving forward. And I think in this show we're really sort of at the cutting I think also it takes a very particular type of director who knows, understands how to work with others. But some directors that didn't be there doing this at all, there's a, it's a different skill set that Max and others have. It's a very particular thing. I agree with that. Max, did you know? I think I'm certainly aware of the work together on the Lorax. Yeah, we, we made the Lorax together, but also Max and I networking on a, a complicity show, Simon McBurney, an opera actually, Dog's Heart. What the dog's heart was I was called? And Max was the assistant director and I was performing the job. And we got on and we could just feel that we were in the same world. So yeah, we have a language um, which is really useful. And it is what you're saying. I think it's and I think you're part of it as well, I think this is what our journey was of like learning what the visual can communicate alongside the textual. And I think what's really exciting for me about that is the visual can communicate to my daughter who's seven, who's over here, and but also to, you know someone who's sophisticated and older and is really communicating on all of those levels at the same time. And I think that uh, universal access, access is beautiful. Right, and uh, so tell us a little bit about how they look, how, they, how are they designed, how do they evolve? Uh, okay, so the, the, the design of the pocket is also pretty exciting. It's another one of the things that me and Nick Barnes, who's the co-designer of the new work on, um, Nick didn't work on War Wars, but obviously I was heavily involved in that, and we did Running Wild, which was with somebody else. But Nick and I were also on that first show that Max and I worked on. And in that we had a dog that was almost as good as our tiger. And all of the joints were elastic. And we really learned something. Because we were like, all was amazing. This big thing charging around the stage with great weight. But the tiger has to move with elasticity. It's like when I look at my domestic cat, it's like a, a you know, what's that design for? No, a yeah. So the tiger sort of wants to go right, right. So we had to give it a solid structure inside, but also, elasticate every joint to every other joint. 
So, I mean, I wish you could see the tiny bit. When it lifts up its paw, like the shoulders move and the sides of its body moves. So the whole thing is sort of connected together. So it's a much more of an organic creation in the way. So, so speaking to that, then, how do you make people believe how uh, process there. The way, the way the puppeteers sort of disappear and you believe, well that is really interesting to think about in puppetry in general. When a puppet comes out on stage, um, you're sort of subliminally making a contract with the audience. You're going to say, are you, do you believe that this is real? And by not leaving the room, you all sort of commit to saying, yeah, okay, I know like a kid, like you and I, we have a toy, a toy car, and we go, this is going to be real. We're going to keep it real between us. And because you're playing that game, you are, um, you are, uh, you are taking part in the creation of that creature, and therefore you are emotionally connected to it. That's the idea of this. But in terms of making puppeteers disappear, the puppeteers, by looking at the puppet, are sending your focus away from them and into the puppet. So every time you see those puppeteers, which are fully visible to you, you are seeing their focus. You are sending your focus to them, but they're bouncing that focus. So you can see that when you're looking at the puppeteer, hopefully the puppeteer is bound to you. You also have to back on the side. Please take a photo. Please share on Instagram, please. Be careful. Please be careful. So you can see here, it's a little bit cross here, but you can see that there's a puppeteer inside. His name's Richard Parker, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you can see, this is one of our puppeteers operating the head, you can see someone else is inside operating the front board, someone else is on the back board, and on the tail, and when the tail, uh, so when it twitches like that, that normally means the tiger is excited, but also if the tiger Cross with somebody, what you'll see is that the iron line really locks on to somebody. And then if the tail goes up as well, it normally means that the tiger's thinking about jumping. It's uh, so you should probably move. Like, <laughs> but maybe we won't kill someone in our demonstration tiger, so get <laughs> okay. Very friendly. So the way our puppy is disappeared is by focusing on the tiger. As you are now, you see the tiger is real. see the way you were working, your arms and everybody else, I could see, you know, you were actually on stage then giving us the whole show, the way the, the creations were going to be, yeah. and I thought that was wonderful. It's a shame that we have to wait until Christmas for this <laughs> but also... I'm available for parties if you want to talk after that. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, is it the London cast that's coming here, or have we got a brand new cast? 
We've got predominantly a brand new cast. We've been casting them in London. Um, uh, they are from all over the country, but we've also got a few of our, um, with the puppetry particularly, every time we've made a new version of the show, from Sheffield White Learnings, and you've been doing this on a particular show for six months, a year, that information is invaluable, so we're trying to take that and grow that into the next part. Also, the creators are all the same, so we're, the original creators were in charge. You see, we're with a, such a creative team partnership without any doubt whatsoever. And I've just got to say, in around Manchester, most of us here have seen various, I won't go into Disney characters of puppetry. I've not seen anything any better than that. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Things about the I just want to say is that one of the first questions was, what, why are we making this title? Why is it puppet? What's he got to do in the show? And the first thing he has to do in the show is the opposite to Disney. We have to scare people. That was one of the things we had not done. Animals are definitely cuddly. They are always dangerous. Interesting. Mm -hmm. A little stretch, shall we? Yeah. It's a hard life. Testing, isn't it? The time it takes. Testing the thinking. Because every puppet's different. 
So every, like we never made we made a goal before. We've never had somebody inside a puppet this size. So they're all different, and all of those decisions are made to motivate by what we wanted to do in the show. So because we've done a goal before with that person, not the heart person on the outside on the side, what we realised is that we just can't get the speed. And to make the tiger frightening, it has to move at speed. So we have to have people in line with the direction of travel. So interesting. Again, that's about uh, sort of intention and mechanics and feel before you put all the finish on it. So is it that like it's, it's storytelling from inside to out? It's it? all focusing on narrative. Yeah. The design and the performance is all moving in the same direction. That's what I love about poetry, is it's quite total. So you've got design and performance and lighting and sound and everything, and they're all going in the same direction. Uh, so the presentation has finished now, we're just having lunch, just got a selection of sandwiches and I think it's going to be a selection of cakes as well, so it's really nice, I'll we'll just show you some of the stuff that we've got. So because I'm super fussy with sandwiches, I've just got the plain ham one, I'm a very fussy sandwich person. I've got some cakes, this is a little red velvet cake. It's very nice. Dad's got one as well. So the press event has now finished. We had such a good time. It was so good. We got to see uh, the tiger. I can't remember what its name is. Uh, we got some sort of tiger. We got a really lovely afternoon tea lunch. We got a, <laughs> we got a lovely tote bag. It's my dad. Enjoy yourself, Dad. Hi. You enjoy it? It was very nice. Yeah, it was really good. It so was very interesting. It was, it was really interesting. So I'm gonna go home now. I need to get Alice from school in a little bit and I'll get back to you later. Hi, so I'm now back from the Life of Pi showcase. It was such a good day, really, really enjoyed myself. My dad really enjoyed it. He's really looking forward to going to the show now. Um, I think he's definitely gonna book tickets for um, my mum and him to go when it's here in December. He, he's really looking forward to going and seeing it. And he loved the tiger and the tiger was amazing. It, the puppets in this are just out of this world. They are so good. The puppeteers, are just amazing how they make you the way they do it you don't even notice that the puppeteers are there you don't even realize that they're there and they're very much on a show but you're just so focused on this tiger it just seems so real and the roars they were making it do and everything is just excellent i'm so excited i definitely want to go and see this show when it comes hopefully we can afford to go um but it, it's it is going to be amazing so we did get a few little goodies. We've got this little tote bag uh, for the life of Pi. We also got a little pot of biscuits in there. So these are boat supplies. A little pot of biscuits, like little shortbread biscuits. So they were really nice. I'm going to eat those later. And just a little leaflet about the show so it's on at the lowry from the 5th of december till the 7th of january so it's on for a good month so plenty of time for people to go and see it it says tickets start from 17 pounds so me and lawrence can afford to go because that's not bad i'll have to see um how i can get the 17 pound tickets because that's not bad is it 17 pounds for an amazing show like this um it looks spectacular. I did, I think I might have filmed a bit of the uh, um, trailer. If I didn't film it all, what I will do, if you go onto my um, blog, 
I will put the trailers on my blog for you to see them. It looks stunning. It it just looks amazing. This show, the special effects and the puppets. I'm really excited to see it. Um, so yeah, I'll also link down below where you can book your tickets as well. Um, and I'll also link down below the official um, website for Life of Pi because it is on tour. It's not just at the Lowry. It's going on a UK tour. So if you can't get to the Lowry, uh, it will be coming to other venues as well. Um, so if you don't think you'll be able to get to Lowry, look on the website and see if it's coming to a theatre near you. So yeah, me and my dad had a lovely day. I always love going to the Lowry anyway. Sometimes we just go there uh, when we're not going to a show and we have a look round. Um, it's got a restaurant in there. There's a cafe. It's got the galleries upstairs, the art galleries. Uh, they often have things on for children. In fact, it's got a really good one on this summer for children in the galleries. It's... um. Uh, Julie Donaldson and Axel Schiff the one so I'm really looking forward to taking the kids there in summer but yeah definitely get your tickets for the life of pie like I said me and Lawrence are definitely hopefully be able to get some if we can get the cheap tickets and yeah I hope you've enjoyed this little vlog um I've absolutely loved it me and my dad had a great day I'm so glad I was able to take my dad because he, he really enjoyed himself um so yeah hopefully me and Lawrence will be going in December so if you want to see a vlog for that then do subscribe hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when that goes up in December obviously it's a fair few months away yet but I can't wait to see it from what I've seen today you're in for a treat it, it's it looks really really good so yeah like I said hope you enjoyed this little vlog if you have please do give it a like don't forget to subscribe hope to see you again soon bye